gain inspiration from a question that I received in one of my videos. In fact, it was on my fall fertilization video about what I thought about the nitrogen blitz. I have seen videos on the nitrogen blitz. I saw one some time ago. And I will say this. I'm not meaning to be mean or catty or anything else of that nature or to pick on anything. And a lot of these guys that are on YouTube are self-proclaimed hobbyists. They are telling you things that have worked for them, which is great. I love the exchange of ideas. And any comments that you have, any things that, any fertilizers that have worked, any techniques that you had, please leave in the comments in my videos. I'm interested to hear. However, <laughs> I am going to go over why the nitrogen blitz is a stupid idea. And I'm going to explain why. Okay. Now, what is nitrogen blitz? Typically, almost uniformly throughout all the videos that I have seen on YouTube about the nitrogen blitz, they are recommending a high, uh, basically water-insoluble nitrogen, generally an agricultural-grade fertilizer that you get at your local feed store, usually ammonia, uh, pure urea, um, 4600, or ammonium sulfate, which is 2100, okay? Uh, here's the thing. They want you to go out with that, a half a pound of nitrogen every single week until the grass slows down. Nobody really gives you temperatures or anything to go on, and that's usually why I give you soil temperatures of when I'm giving you recommendations on how I put out to give you something to go by, uh, at least something you can measure. The thing is with this, all of them also say you are going to be mowing two to three times a week when you do this. This is dumb thing number one. <laughs> Let's look at that from a practical standpoint. If you're going to be mowing your grass two to three weeks, one, do you want to do that? Do you have time to do that? Many of you have kids. It is fall. They just come back to school. Uh, you're taking the football, the soccer, the lacrosse, what have you, dance, whatever. Do you really have time to mow your yard three times a week? And as a golf course superintendent, I can tell you, I had to mow fairways uh, on Monday and Thursday. I had to mow green surrounds, uh, tees, and green approaches on Tuesday and Friday, and, and mow green six days a week. What am I getting at? If it rained Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it was all hands on deck Thursday and Friday to get that gr grass mowed by the weekend for weekend play, and I also had to deal with the clumps, meaning clumpage of the grass because it's growing reasonably aggressively. Just the accumulation of grass clippings is going to murder you. <laughs> I'm just telling you. You think about it. You have three days of really good rain. You have pumped this. Maybe, you've done, maybe you're on your second week of a pound of quick-release nitrogen per 1,000 square feet, and it rains three days that week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. By Thursday, you're mowing. It's probably all, it's going to be tall, so it's not going to get very dry, and now you're, you're already mowing wet grass, it's already too high for your lawnmower. Your lawnmower probably will survive it, but how, how slow are you going to have to uh, go just mowing that yard? Then turn around and probably have to rake it up. And if you did, just left the clumps out there, at best, you're going to have yellowing where those clumps were the next time you mow, or at worst, it's going to kill the grass. That's dumb thing number one, probably number one, two, and three. That's why you never want to put that much nitrogen on a yard that much. You just don't want to do it. The second thing that's kind of dumb about this, and the one guy who actually saw his video admitted it does do this. That first application, when you're using 4600, pure urea nitrogen, is, this is why I say do not use anything above 30% of any particular uh, nutrient that you're putting out on a bag of fertilizer. You're going to have a fertilizer particle here, for example, and a fertilizer particle here, for example. And what's going to happen is, is they're not going to get the overlap of those two urea sources that you put out on your yard and you're going to get a really green area here and a really green area here and in the middle it's not going to get any nitrogen because they are so far apart and that's going to look kind of foolish the first week then you're going to come back and it is going to clean it up the second week but we're back to now to the excessive growth third reason why this is a bad idea or dumb you really don't need that much nitrogen um, <clears throat> as I do in just about all my videos, I do find the university publications part of my research of these videos. Generally, I know what I'm going to say and get into, but I also look at university publications to just kind of fortify what I'm talking about. And sometimes it does give me an idea, or even for refreshes my brain of something that I may have remembered in the past or experienced in the past. 
Michigan State University, Dr. Peter Lansford down below. You guys can check that out. He talks about fall fertilization. He's spot on, does a great job. As he says, there was actually a couple studies, one done at the University of Virginia, one done in Ohio. They did not see a significant amount of difference between putting out a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet and two pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet in the fall in spring green life. And at the end of the day, that's where we're talking about. We're really talking about getting the grass, a lot of those sugars stored up in the plant to overwinter and then be available in the spring for good spring spring green up. That's why I advocate my fall fertilization video. That's why this is the most important application of the year for those of you who have cool season grasses. But there is not much difference between putting out one pound of nitrogen and two pounds of nitrogen other than you have to mow like crazy. <laughs> and they're also finding, in, he did mention that article about disease issues. I would say do putting out fall fertilization you can get dollar spot well in the October, sometimes in the November, so that actually will help dollar spot putting out the nitrogen application. Not this much. Um, and there again, going back from the practical standpoint, you're going to have to water urea and, and ammonium sulfate in. If you don't water it in, you're going to burn your grass. The likelihood of you burning that grass is pretty high. These are hot fertilizers. A few other things, wasn't going to go here, but <laughs> a few other things that I just caution you on, things that I would not do that I saw in all of these videos in regards to application methods. The first one is using one of these handheld spreaders. Um, whenever I'm training someone to fertilize a golf green, I always tell them before you leave the golf cart and or cart path, make sure when you go up to the green to have enough, enough fertilizer in that hopper to finish the green. Why is that a big deal? You don't want to get up there on the green, get half done, and realize that you don't have enough fertilizer you're going to do one of two things. Either one, you're going to go, take, go back, get the bag of fertilizer and fill it up on the green. Don't ever do that <laughs> because you're ultimately going to spill it and that would burn up your green. Same thing with your yard. Whenever you're putting up fertilizer and you have like my fertilizer spreader, show, you know, here it is. Uh, it, it's an old fertilizer spreader and it does sometimes the impeller doesn't work. I always wear a hat whenever I'm putting out fertilizers because what I'll do is, is I will take if I have a malfunction, for some reason I ran out of product, I will actually take that hat off. I will put it behind the wheels in the direction that I was going. And it shouldn't be, <laughs> well, it shouldn't be windy enough that it should blow the hat away. That's the other thing, too. Don't, don't try not to put out fertilizer in the heavy wind. But if you do, put a rock on top of it. That way you know exactly where those wheels are and you know the exact trajectory that you're going. So that way you don't overlap, particularly with these high water-soluble, quick-release fertilizers that these guys are advocating to put out, okay? Now, second thing I saw. Saw putting out a quick-release fertilizer with a backpack sprayer. I would never do this in any situation. The reason being is this. I'll tell you a quick story. I'll tell you something on myself. Uh, years ago, has eighth, it was actually the eighth tee of a golf course I was taking care of. Um, and in the distance, I saw this wee little sliver, and it got wide, and then it got narrow. And it was crabgrass coming up. So I went out there and looked at it, and I realized I did not overlap enough when I put out my pre-emergent that June, enough with that sprayer, I had gotten away from my last pass, and that wee little area had a great stand of crabgrass coming. Wasn't a big deal. I went out, put a post-emergent down with a pre-emergent, smoked the area. I was fine. Story over. The problem is with fertilizers is if, at best, if you miss a spot, it's going to be peaked and it's going to look, you know, you're going to have this green where you put out your, your fertilizer. Then you're going to have the area that you didn't fertilize and it's going to be very distinct and it's going to be yellow. Worst case scenario, and this is why I generally put out um, sometimes I use an indicator dye. Generally, I use a spray foam. Actually, in the end of a boom, you have these little um, a little tubes, and they put out a blob of foam every probably about 70 feet. Okay, so that way you know you can overlap. If you're putting this out with a backpack sprayer, if you use a spray indicator dye, first of all, those are messy. I don't use them. They are a pain in the butt. You look like a smurf when you're done with them. You could conceivably put out um, with a backpack sprayer for, uh, fertilizers in 
when they're due on, so you can see where you're at. But uh, if you even that, it's sketchy. You, the likelihood of you being able to put out a uniform fertilizer application with backpack sprayer is slim to none. That's why I advocate using these hose end adapters. They have been, they're very safe. They're methylene urea. They're stabilized urea. You can put them out there very convenient to put it out that way. So anyway. And so those are the two things that I saw, particularly putting out fast-release fertilizers that I just had to say something that's just wrong. Okay, as far as what I recommend you do, see my fall fertilization video. I'm going to leave it right here at the end. You guys can check that out. I go over what you need to be doing. As far as this blitz and all this nitrogen and all this potential mowing, and all this watering, because you're going to have to water it in and all this other stuff, it's just not a good idea. And it's, you know, there again. Do not need to put this much nitrogen down in order to get the results that you want. You want to go ahead and go out with a good um, slow a, a fertilizer with a modestly high percentage of a slow release in it. It takes the guesswork out of it. Uh, if you put it out, like I say in my video, around that first frost time, it's going to feed and, and your, your, your grass is going to be able to absorb it. With six weeks, if you put it at that first, first frost, it's going to take the guesswork out of it, continue to feed, and that nitrogen is going to continue to get into the plant as it goes in, as it slows down. It's not really going dormant, but as it slows down in the winter, it's still going to feed for those six weeks, and you should be good. So, anyway, I'm agronomist Greg Phillips. I really appreciate you watching. If you, this helps you, please like and subscribe. If you subscribe, I uh, will try to keep my videos very topical, and I'll give you a heads up on things you should or should not be doing, and uh, I try to keep things ahead of time schedule. So <laughs> that way you know maybe there's something you should be looking at or maybe it's something you should be considering and um, keep on top of things. So anyway, I appreciate you watching.